when JT and I were prepping for this, and it's great to have both of you on, uh, we've put, we put together a few questions, but I think one of the things that uh, always comes up, and we can kind of dive right into some of these, some of these good questions, but to help ground some individuals um, on the conversation that we're going to have over the course of the next um, 45 minutes or so, is is I know that like kind of the uh, the diversity inclusion and equity work um, sometimes is is a, is a bit of a mystery uh, to folks and how that actually uh, comes about and 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 actually exists within a within a company and so I was hoping that maybe uh, both of you would talk a little bit about um, uh, what that what that means in the role um, and how that how that relates to the work that you would do on a day to day basis. And Jeez, Shannon, right in, I know, I, I kind of went, I kind of went like full <laughs> throttle, right? And Shannon's like, you know what, hey, we're just going to, you know, <laughs> come into this, tell you a little bit about Seattle, we'll chat about that, yeah. running into Seattle, yeah. yeah. But I want to know, I want to know the details, I want to know, like Shannon, yeah. so tell me a bit about what is the, what is the work that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, so it's a lot. Um, I am currently the Senior Manager of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at Brooks Running. Um, you know, I think part of your question was how does somebody get into that work? Um, and it's been quite a long journey for me. I actually spent over 20 years in my career as a fashion designer. So working in the outdoor industry and the athletic um, industry. And I have been um, at Brooks for over nine years now. Um, and so I was on the apparel team. And so I've transitioned into this role around diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, you know, for me, I it really starts with my upbringing. So I am mixed, I'm African-American and white. And I grew up with a father who, you know, served in the US Army um, during World War II when the, our military was segregated. So he was in a segregated regiment. Um, you know, he marched with MLK. Um, my parents were married about five years after interracial marriage was legalized in all states. Um, and so I, you know, I had this, it was my normal really to, you know, half my family's black, half my family's white. So I had a lot of diversity my, in my life and my parents, um, you know, my, my dad worked in education um, and my mom worked for the government. They had a lot of friends, all different kinds of friends. So, and uh, my father was very social. So we had a lot of parties growing up. And so I, was, I feel very lucky that um, I grew up around a lot of very different types of people. Um, I think that, you know, when I got into college, I realized, I, you know, I started taking uh, African American studies, Native American studies, multicultural studies, and it was really eye opening for me personally to um, really understand the uh, education that I got coming through the public school system about how much I didn't learn and the perspective of what I learned, especially like U.S. history. So, you know, coming up in the public um, school education system, it was a very European biased education. And so I was, it was really, I, like I had my own experience and my, my family's experience, but to know that, like, wait a minute, people experience history in very different ways. Um, and so when my kids were little, I really sought out a different type of education for them. And, um, you know, as I studied those things in college, I ended up with a degree in fashion design, which I love. And that, you know, that um, that has taken me all over the world, working with lots of different people and lots of different cultures. Um, and when my kids were so when my kids were young, I sought out and put them in schools that had a social justice focus that taught history from different perspectives. Um, and that's really how I kind of got into this work more professionally. Um, and in 2015, uh, I, you know, I was serving on a board of trustees for one of my son's schools, um, and they had gone through a reaccreditation process. And um, part of that reaccreditation was that they had to have a focus on DEI. And so I was asked to lead a committee um, to create a strategic plan around, you know, hiring diverse faculty and staff, um, creating diversity within student enrollment. Um, including diversity, equity, and inclusion within curriculum. And so, you know, that was all volunteer work, um, but that's, it was, it was really a lot of work. Um, and that's professionally how I started getting into this work. Um, 
And in 2016, you know, Brooks was really focused on, you know, really intentionally focused on um, uh, gender balance um, and creating gender diversity um, within the company. And so I started talking with leadership around other types of diversity. And so since 2016 at Brooks, I've been leading um, a, a kind of a grassroots employee resource group, um, you know, really pushing Brooks um, on diversity, equity, inclusion initiatives. And so that's that's kind of how I ended up where I am today, working on this. You know, it's um, I'm very passionate about fashion and outdoors, um, but I'm also really passionate about diversity, equity, and inclusion. You know, and it's also been an experience for me to you know, try to go through my career as a fashion designer and navigating that in the corporate world where it isn't very diverse. Um, that was kind of a long story. <laughs> Sorry. But that's um, how you get there. If but that's yeah. how you get there, that's yeah. how you get there. It's like yeah. this this winding road of experience from when we're little littles that build on top of it. And it seems yeah. uh, Josh so, it, it, yeah, so cool. Yeah, and I'm uh, day to day, there's a lot. So um, there's a lot of work around strategic planning, um, setting goals. Um, really, we started with looking at like, where do we stand now? You know, like, what is what does our business look like? How did we get here? And where do we want to go? So um, there's a lot of strategy and planning. Um, and then really diving in with different teams on the smaller details on how we want to get to where we go. Mm, mm, yeah, yeah, and, and and it sounds like um, you know what I'm hearing from a lot of what you're you're talking about is it, it starts with the representation piece, and then it's and then it kind of builds it builds from there. Um, it, I think we're going to dive in a little bit more on on that as well. But Martha, I'm curious from from your perspective too, um, as JT had mentioned. That there are some things that we all carry with us when you know when, when we're little that just kind of shape the direction that we want to go professionally down the road. Um, did you have some of those same experiences uh, as a as a youngster? Things that were influential in, in where you wanted to be professionally? Yeah, very similar to Shannon. I mean, um, oftentimes now I think about I in order for me to do the work that I do, I need to bring my full self to the table, and that also means acknowledging and representing all of the identities that I hold. So I am a woman, I'm a woman of color. I'm also an immigrant. I didn't become a US citizen until 2011. The first election that I voted in was Obama's second term. It was in my you know mid to late twenties at that point. So um, I think in order for me to do the work that I do, I need to carry all of those labels, right? I need to be able to be comfortable to be my authentic self because that really helps me to have different perspectives and think through different strategies or forms of communication, but also to be able to hold space for the people around me. That's really important because I want them to feel like they can bring their, their best self. So yeah, very similarly, I mean, I came to this country from uh, Mexico when I was a year old, my parents came here and you know, one of the first places that I remember them working at was the bakery uh, for Trader Joe's. So that like banana bread that Trader Joe's puts out that holds such yeah. a special <laughs> place in my heart because that was wow. what my parents would bring home right so i i remember just all of the hard work and everything that they've put into creating this world that you know i'm so privileged to be able to have and laying this really strong foundation for me so i i bring all of that to the table and for many many years i did assimilate i did not i was i was scared to wear my hair naturally curly i would straighten it all the time uh you know all the chemicals, there's a lot, of, you know, this is more information that you need to know, but there's a wow. lot of chemically straightened chemicals <laughs> that you could put in your hair to straighten it. I did every form of that growing up. Um, and yeah, I assimilated because I, I wanted to fit in. I was scared of like being myself. I was scared of showing up in a way because I would knew, I knew that I could potentially be labeled as you know, a certain stereotype of being too passionate or being too aggressive, being too assertive or certain things. So now, um, you know, within the last five years, I've just really owned who I am and I do it unapologetically because times have changed. And how do you, how do you think that that, um, that authenticity in the way that you um, show up has affected uh, the, the work that you do? 
Oh, it affects everything. Um, it makes me think through more who has a seat at the table, whose voices are being heard when decisions are being made. Like that's one piece that I think is really important to when doing the, you know, the work of diversity, equity and inclusion and belonging. It's really important to make sure that people feel like they can show up as themselves and give their feedback, whatever that feedback may be, whatever um, they want to say. So it really for me with the work that I do, you know, overseeing creative and communications, it's really important for me to have a team that represents the diversity of the consumers we're trying to reach out to as well. You know, that's where you get the authenticity piece.